Well, good evening, YouTube. Uh, it's a Saturday afternoon, Saturday the 6th of May. Um, I'm going to do a quick video on the Epibulpus cyanonathus, uh, the uh, blue fang. Oh, yeah, blue fang. Um, this is a requested video from a subscriber, Eric Place. He's getting some in this week and wants to know a little bit about their care. Um, my problem, as anybody that keeps these know, they are unbelievably quick. Okay, so first of all, if you've prepared for quick, you haven't prepared for quick. Because these things are extremely fast. Uh, they, they rival the Tapanakinias for what I would say the fastest uh, that I have. Um, the K at the Palma Oval of KM also is, is pretty stinking quick, but just grabbing this container, uh, this little one has done about 30 laps around this, uh, deli cup. Now it's only about a yeah, three quarter inch to an inch sling, maybe a tad bit more stretched out, uh, very skinny. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a few things that I do now, um, on the bottom, I have a layer of vermiculite, not a big layer, um, just half an inch possibly of, of vermiculite. And in the middle, when I mix this, when I put the cocoa fiber in there, I kind of like made a hole and I put some more vermiculite in the middle. Now, the Epibulpus genus is a burrowing species, um, more of a swampy species, so they do like damp substrate. And as you can tell, mine is not. Um, every time I've attempted over the course of the last couple days to wet this bugger down, it has just done laps and laps and laps. And I just haven't been able to get in there to do it. I just don't want it to get out. So unfortunately, we're kind of struggling. So what I'm going to do is I have a, uh, a little cricket here and I have a thing of water. Now, some of you are going to ask what the hell the straw is for. So what I found is because this guy did not burrow very much, you can see what he did right there, or it did right there. It just kind of made like a web tunnel that comes right out that back end. So that's where it spends some of its time. It hasn't dug down um, in a turret like I would call it. If you've seen Marilyn Moore's... Um, she has hers in a, in a dram bile. I'm not sure if it's a 40 dram or 50 dram bile. Um, and hers dug right down the middle. And what it does is it brings the dirt up to the top. And it, it raises it above the level of the substrate. Which I call, I think most of the trench that people call, call it's a turret. Um, kind of like their watch post. Or, you know, they, they would come to that entrance or the top of that uh, when they were want to search for food. Now, now again... They're not actively going out and finding them. Your tarantulas just don't do that. They wait for things to come to them. They don't leave the burrow very often, and that's why a lot of people will tell you that enclosure size doesn't need to be too big for them because they really don't wander much. And this is a species that I found doesn't really wander much. It just likes to run. So I'm going to attempt to partially remove this lid and get the cricket in there. If I can get the cricket in there and the uh, blue fang decides to eat, then uh, we'll probably be able to get some water. Now, back to the straw. Um, again, what I found is trying to get the lid off and dampen the substrate enough um, to moisten it down the bottom. I was not having a lot of success. That's an awful lot of substrate. It's roughly five inches of substrate, maybe a tad bit more to get through and if anybody has if you've worked with cocoa fiber before if if it's dry and it's packed down the water will just puddle on top and get real 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 damp on top and it takes a long time for it to drain down and by the time that it gets to where you want it to it's it's not going down there any farther so it actually never makes it so what i do is i use the straw and then you could just take a uh sorry i was sitting on my flashlight a syringe 
and suck the water up in the syringe and then push the water down through the straw. That way it'll get down to the bottom of the enclosure and the vermiculite will hold the humidity and it'll dampen the substrate below them. The top doesn't need to be totally damp. I mean, you could spray that now and then if you want, but if, if you want the water and the moisture to be down below so that, you know, the humidity will rise. And, and I think if they find that humidity, I think that's been the problem why mine's not digging is it's not wet enough down there. So I put the straw in. I had it in originally and I took it out because I didn't like the looks of it. But, you know, you know I, I probably should have like glued some substrate to it or something just to keep it hidden. But I don't think the spiders are really going to care. So I'm going to pause you and um, try to get this cricket in there. And hopefully we'll, we can at least, I don't know if we're going to get to see the attack because by the time that I... Uh, well, you know what, I'll get the tripod set up and you can watch me struggle. Okay, so I got you on the tripod. Spider's right here. Okay, so I'm going to try and open up the lid on this side without putting him into another. Usually I put him or put this one in another enclosure when I do this because I just don't want it to fly out. <clears throat> now... Getting an attack or seeing the attack, I don't know if that's going to happen. It, it's hard to see through the top of the enclosure. And I surely don't want to take this off. And this is this guy's not been a good eater for me. Um, strangely enough, Aoife Bokus are supposed to be really, really good eaters. And this one's not been a good eater for me. It's, uh, I got it at a little over half inch. And it's molted twice. I want to say... I have to look up exactly when I got it and how many times it's eaten, but I want to say maybe three, maybe four times it's eaten. When it is hungry, it doesn't waste any time. So right now, that cricket walking around there, that little dude just is not interested whatsoever. And it molted three, four weeks ago, and it's eaten once. So I would like, I would love for that thing to... Uh, do with that syringe I had. Oh, here it is. <clears throat> um, I would love for that that dude to take that cricket, which will enable me to do a little bit of moisturing this enclosure. But that cricket's been all the way around him so far, and it hasn't shown any kind of interest whatsoever. I don't know if you guys can actually see. Okay, the spider's back here, where my finger is. I think the tripod's probably just a tad bit too high. If I put this onto another enclosure, you might be able to see it, but maybe. Okay, if this thing bolts, it's your fault, Eric. There it is right there. You can see how pretty it is. Um, the pink legs, that greenish, yellowish carapace, or uh, abdomen, sorry. And the yellow, I like the yellow bands um, on the legs. And of course the blue fangs. There's a better look. See, it's got like purplish um, tarsal. I guess that's a tarsal, or is that the metatarsal? No, it's a tarsal part, right? And, and and they'll ball up like this when when they're scared and you know this one's probably done enough laps and isn't wanting to go anything any farther. So what I'm going to do is we'll back you guys back off here, and I think it's going to be safe enough to. Okay, so we'll just take the syringe. And then the water you could see how it will go down now of course it's going to run down through the straw or outside the straw too i thought about like putting and, and i may do it on the next enclosure is actually do like i don't know if you guys understand or know like drainage tile um if it's just you know plastic pipe with a bunch of holes in it that you put in the ground you know to drain the land or you know, like French drains in your basement. Um, that gets rid of the moisture and it gives it some place to go. I was thinking about doing that with straws, you know, taking a couple uh, 
taking one straw and making a circle out of it and then gluing it together and then poking holes in it and then taking two straws on either side and then you know making holes in that to the other straw around the circle at the bottom to actually get um, moisture throughout the whole entire enclosure instead of just in this one spot here I'm going to go ahead and use all the water that I had in this little pill vial and then I'll throw some in that water dish for it that's being kind of cooperative not taking off on us which is good now if you don't want to use the straw which you you know it's not necessary you could just take like a paint your paintbrush and and make a make a hole there and then just use that area you know to to put substrate down you need it to be loose so that the water will actually get down there if if it's tight and you'll see let me see if i can explain it here or show you um, we'll just like spray water right on top and you'll see exactly what i'm talking about here see how the water just puddles there and then it gets sucked up just to that one little spot okay because it's really really dry now some of the water ran down this area where that hole or divot is and I said this is probably going to need a lot more water than what I have in this pill vial we'll just keep pushing it in there <clears throat> You don't want to get it to the point where, of course, you create a huge water puddle or a flood underneath there. You, you do want to get this substrate damp. And you could you could take this, you know, see now he's a little, he's a little jumpy, and pour it in. Okay, and you could see the water puddles, and then it'll get absorbed by the substrate. So we'll get some damp spots. And you don't want the your substrate soaking wet, you know, you just want it a little damp. And, you know, I mean, if it gets a little too wet, you may end up having issues like mold, um, you know, because these, these enclosures will mold up. Um, these are a great species to have isopods or springtails in with them. So, uh, I hope this explained a few things to you, Eric. Um, again, you know, feeding is is based on on your spider itself uh, this one needs to eat its abdomen is not very big it's just not interested in doing it right now um that has eaten small small mealworms and small crickets uh, it has not i tried it with uh, red runners and it has not touched the red runners once so i've taken them out of there um but you want to get it to burrow. If it's not burrowing as, a, as an ephobopus, I, you know, th there's apparently something wrong. And this one has been like this for me from day one. So I don't know that I was doing everything correctly. I've been trying different things with it. I've talked to a few people on what to do and I've taken their advice and it still does not want to dig. So I'm just going to assume that my spider is just not interested in digging. Um, maybe, you know, when it gets a tad bit bigger, it will want to bury itself and burrow and feel more safe. But this one seems to be a surface dweller with just its little tiny web hammock here in the corner. So that's where we're at. I hope, uh, again, Eric, if this answered some of your questions, if you have any specific questions, you know, just put them in the comments and, uh, hopefully I'll be able to answer them. If not, I'm sure that somebody will be able to. I know a handful of people that have them. West Coast Arachnids has them. Marilyn Moore has one. Um, I'm not sure if Dave Scott has one or not. Um, I think Mark's Tarantulas has one. And I'm not, I think maybe Silver Spires. No, Silver Spires has the Marinas, I think. So, yeah, that's that's them. The genus specifically, again, it's a South American species. It's It's a little quicker and... Uh, a little quicker than most terrestrials or, 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 or uh, uh, the burrowing species, the fossorials. Uh, they like the substrate a tad bit more damp than, than most. Um, putting in some moss is not a bad idea. You know, and again, I considered that with this one and I just didn't do it. Um, so, you know, you could put the moss in, which will help with the humidity. Um, dampen the substrate, keep the water dishes as full as you possibly can i know it can be a struggle but uh yeah i wanted to get this done for eric before the end of the weekend 
Um, the next couple weeks are probably going to be a little bit busy. I do want to do another quick video tonight that I'll upload. Um, I get this one uploaded and then um, possibly the other one will get uploaded to tonight also. If not, it'll get uploaded tomorrow. And that was the rehousing of my homeo Emma. Homoeoma. That's actually homoeoma. Species blue. Um, I, I put together the enclosure uh, the other day after I got done housing all the uh, Kilo Brackies. <clears throat> and uh, I, I love the way it turned out. So I'd like to show you guys what I did. And uh, I should have done like a tam time lapse when I put everything together. But so when I get concentrating on something specific, a task, I like to concentrate on that. And I don't even think about videoing stuff. I don't want to worry about the camera being right, the lighting being right, and everything else. So as I do more of these videos, I'll get more comfortable with doing some of that, that stuff where, you know, I got the GoPro. I still haven't used it yet. Um, I know they're not difficult to use. I just have to find the right situation to do it. And, uh, again, thanks for watching and, uh, talk to you soon.